There can only be one best lens for bird photography. No matter what brand you use, Canon, Sony, Nikon, there is only one must-have lens for bird photographers in 2021. Don't buy any other lens until you have this one. Hey, Dave Reed here. Thanks for tuning in. If you've just started out in bird photography or have been at it for a few years, I'm going to guess that one of the top questions you have is, what's the best lens for taking bird photos? As a bird photographer, there is one go-to lens for me. It's fast, tack sharp, great bokeh, good reach, and a workhorse. If you don't already have it, this is the one lens you must buy in 2021. I'd like to thank you for tuning in and please help to support my channel by subscribing and hitting that notifications button below so you won't miss my next video. And if you'd like to learn more about my bird photography and how I took each photo, check out my Instagram channel where I detail what birding camera and what lens I used and the camera settings for each bird photo. The link is in the description below. All the bird photos you've been watching were taken with this lens, the 70 to 200 millimeter f2.8. Yep, this is the best birding lens to own especially for your first non-kit lens. So you're most likely asking why this lens and not one of the larger ones like the 150 to 600 millimeter or the 200 to 600 millimeter or the new 800 millimeter or even the 100 to 400 millimeter lens. In my experience, the larger lenses are limited in overall practical use in the field. Don't get me wrong, they're great lenses, but certainly not the first one you should buy. If you're looking to buy your first birding photography lens in 2021, buy a 70 to 200 millimeter lens with an aperture of f2.8. All the major manufacturers make this lens with almost identical specs. They all have one for a reason. It's a workhorse. There is no other way to describe it. Next to a nifty 50, this is a must have lens, new or used. So why do I love this lens so much? So here are my top reasons for having a 70 to 200 millimeter lens for bird photography. First, Aperture. With an aperture of f2.8, you'll be able to shoot in low light situations and still capture sharp, focused images. Let's face it, most birds are tucked away in a tree or bush where lighting is always an issue. Larger lenses are simply too slow, almost unusable in these situations. I guess if you buy a prime lens like a 400mm f2.8, it's a different story. But if you can afford that lens, this video isn't for you. The other thing is that when you shoot at f2.8, the bokeh is silky smooth and still has enough depth of field to have much of the bird in focus, if not all of it. The second reason is sharpness. I use both the Canon 70 to 200 millimeter version two lens and the Sony 70 to 200 millimeter G Master lens. I've had the Canon lens for over a decade and it is still amazing. Both of these lenses are tack sharp, quick to acquire focus and always on point. I never have to second guess when I use this lens. Image stabilization. All major brands that have a 70 to 200 millimeter f2.8 lens have stabilization built in, either with one or two modes. I'll shoot with image stabilization turned on or off depending on the situation. Basically, the higher the shutter speed, the less likely I am to use it. But again, in low light situations, image stabilization combined with an aperture of f2.8 is a must have for bird photographers. And the last reason, for me to use a 70 to 200 millimeter lens is it's rugged. I can say firsthand that the Canon 70 to 200 millimeter lens is a tank. A few years back while foraging a path in the Canadian backcountry, searching for birds and other wildlife, I tripped over a log and fell hard to the ground. At the time I had my Canon 1DX and Canon 70 to 200 millimeter version two lens with me. My natural instinct was to reach out with my arms and brace myself. In my right hand, I had my camera strapped to my wrist, locked in. I had no time to react and went down hard, driving that lens into the ground. Lucky for me, the only damage was some dirt in the filter threads, brushed it off, and I went back to searching for wildlife to photograph. Now, I wouldn't advise anyone to do this, obviously, but knowing how tough this lens is allows me to work more freely in the field, especially for bird photography and wildlife photography. So these are the top four reasons I think the best bird photography lens is the 70 to 200 millimeter f2.8. There are many other great lenses to buy, but if you don't have this lens in your bag, you're missing out. Buy it first. You won't regret it. Thanks for watching and I hope you learned a few things that will help you when evaluating what birding lens you should buy. 
Again, please help to support my channel by subscribing and hitting that notification button below so you won't miss my next video. And if you'd like to learn more about my bird photography and how I took each photo, check out my Instagram channel where I detail what birding camera and lens I used and the camera settings I used for each bird photo. The link is in the description below. If you have any questions or thoughts on other must-have lenses for bird photography, please leave a comment below. I'd like to hear them. Remember, it's your photography. Go shoot it.